Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm Christy, and I'm here today with Mindy Corcoran and Lisa Cooper of the Hope Workshop. We're here to radiate healing. And this new endeavor, the Hope Workshop, is something that I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about in a very strange way, that it's designed to bring healing to the workplace. And um, sometimes we work with someone who's had a major loss in their life, um, the loss can be, you know, the loss of a spouse, the loss of a child, the loss of a parent, or it, even the loss of, of health, um, many different types of loss. And sometimes at work we don't know how to talk to somebody. We don't know how to, to treat somebody. Do we not talk about the elephant in the room? Do we stammer and not mention our children? Do we, I don't know, we, we kind of are at a loss sometimes. So welcome, Mindy and Lisa. I really appreciate you being here to talk about this. It's important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, the, Christy. Thank you. So it's the Hope Workshop. The Hope Workshop. Okay, and you've already started taking this on the road, right? On the road in Kansas City. In Kansas yeah. City, exactly. <laughs> so how did you how did you start putting this even together? How did you know that there was a need for it? So Christy, personally, I felt that there was a need for it after I experienced tragedy in April of 2014. And uh, my father and son were both murdered at the Jewish Community Center, and then shortly after, Terry Lamano was murdered. So it was a white supremacist. And um, tell me again who Terry Lamano is. Terry Lamano is um, the third person who was murdered in the oh, incident. Yes. So a lot of times, if I just mention my dad and Reed, people are, kind of are like, "Well, there was a third person." So I'm always careful to say. There were three people murdered, and right. my dad and son were two of them. And they were the first two. My dad was the first one. And then my son, 14-year-old Reet, was murdered That's, after uh. he was murdered. And um, I was the co-founder and CEO of a wealth management firm, and mm -hmm. I was working in the wealth management firm at the time and had been and loved my career very much and loved what I was doing. But as I tried to reintegrate back into the office, it was difficult. My team did as much as they could do for me as much as they knew how, um, but stepping back from it now several years later, I was able to look at that, you know, as we look back on things and say, how could that have been better? Um, how, you know, is there something I could have done better, better mm -hmm. as the person who was affected? What could they have done differently mm -hmm. if they had the tools to do that? Mm -hmm. And so that's um, where I got the passion to, um, to look at how can we help people heal in the workplace. And specifically, my perspective came from mm -hmm. the person who was affected. I call it disrupted. My life was disrupted. Right. Um, and then as Lisa and I have been working together, we switched it around to instead of the person who's disrupted mm -hmm. having the responsibility of making it all okay mm -hmm. in the workplace, we are talking to employers and team members who are welcoming that person back in and what can they say and what should they not say and how can they make right. it a soft landing mm -hmm. for that um, friend to come back into the space. Supportive and right and take care of you. Do you feel like it was uh, maybe different because you were the CEO as opposed to someone who was, um, you know, like a... A staff know, member? A staff member, yeah. Well, interesting because I was the CEO. Exactly. And so... If, if it had happened to someone else, right, I would have been the CEO helping. Exactly. I don't know what I would have done in that instance because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known the pain that they were in. I think it's because I felt mm -hmm. all of the pain. I felt all of the agony. I felt all of the indecision, um, questioning everything. Uh, my brain didn't work properly for months. I, I forgot how to do math, which is important when you're in wealth management. <laughs> kind of, So yeah. there, there are things that I experienced in the trauma that affected right. me physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And so um, I, just, I just don't think that anyone had the tools in, in, in a lot of companies to be able to handle that because they haven't had the experience. So I felt like 
I can do this. I can help people go, you know, process this so that they can bring the people back into their workspace and help Mm -hmm. it be a healing process at the same time. Rather than leaving all of their agony and pain out in the parking lot, um, I want the whole process to be, um, I want to be a whole person again, and you want that person to be a whole person again, but they need help getting there. They do. They do. And so then I, Lisa and I met. Yeah, how did you two meet? Well, we met in, let's see, 2015, Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. um, I had spoken at one of the Give 7 Days events at that point in time, and Give 7 Days, you might just take a second just to say um, a result of the tragedy that many went through was the Give 7 Days initiative, and it's really seven days of kindness. Uh So they have speakers every day, different days are devoted to different things, and I spoke on Discover Day, Mm -hmm. and it was discovering um, really just how to keep our hearts open um, to the spirit of our loved ones. Mm-hmm. So then we met, stayed in touch, and mm-hmm. then um, put our heads together on what can we do to develop an initiative that supports employees, as Mindy said, when they go back into the workplace. Mm-hmm. And I had written a book after my mother passed away. Mm-hmm. My career had been in marketing and advertising for many, many years. Right. And after my mom died, I wrote a book to give people hope and inspiration uh, when they had the loss of a loved one. So I worked with a lot of grievers and, as you know, did a lot of workshops. And we see those folks in an evening event or perhaps a weekend event. But then they go back to work on Monday. And then they go back to work with perhaps maybe three to five days of bereavement. And the grief doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And the grief doesn't stop between 8 and 5. So what can we do from a corporate perspective Mm -hmm. to help those folks when they get back to work from a team perspective? And it's not an EAP. We like to call ourselves the umbilical cord. With an EAP. We're the umbilical part yeah. to the EAP. Right. Right. Because right. we're not replacing that. No. And we're definitely not replacing human resources. Right. We we work in, con- in uh, partnership, in partnership, partnership. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with human resources. Right. Absolutely. This is a, a resource for the Absolutely. human resources. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because even human re- resources, I don't know that they know how to really talk to a person who's gone through tragedy. Well, and maybe if they've had an experience, mm-hmm. they might have personal experience. But what we've heard from our focus groups, which was mm-hmm. made up of human resource um, people, right. um, is that they said that this is lacking, that this mm-hmm. piece is lacking. And, so. they, and they are very busy with everything else human resource related. From benefits to everything else that's going oh, on. Oh, absolutely. Right. So that there's a gap in corporate America on what we can do mm-hmm. to really offer what we call heart-based healing. Right. You know, And what we've done is put together our 90-minute workshop. It's called mm-hmm. the Hope workshop and the hope workshop specifically stands for h heart-based healing o opportunities for healing in terms of what to say what not to say to somebody how to find the right location in the corporation to talk to someone p stands for personalized purpose Mm -hmm. in terms of as you know when someone has a loss Mm -hmm. they often reevaluate their life they often reevaluate what's important you know in their transformation so how can we really focus on their purpose when they come back to work so they don't leave the company right you know and last we also talk about employee engagement um, in terms of what we're going to do practically every single day when that person comes back Uh, So we give them a plan. And and it might be helpful to just go through the HOPE now, and we could just give a little snippet on each each module. Yeah, I love that because, um, you know, like I said, it's kind of like walking on eggshells sometimes when someone comes back. And Mm -hmm. I think it was, wasn't it Sheryl Sandberg? She said, you know. An option B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody, especially when it's the boss, I feel. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's kind of awkward. What do you say? Right, but mm-hmm. um, I remember when I was in publishing that there was someone in my office who her daughter went through cancer for mm-hmm. several years. I mean, I'm talking a teenager, mm-hmm. and then finally succumbed to it, and mm-hmm. none of us knew what to do. Right, right, right. right. It's so needed. So yes, let's go over the H O P E. H O P E. Well, we t- start with H, and yeah, right. H stands for heart-based healing. Mm-hmm. And I often like to say, just with my many years in corporate America, I like to say heart-based healing in a head-based world. Oh, because right. Because we are in corporate America. It is very head-based, very left brain. Right. And but how can we find the right balance of head and heart in the workplace? Mm-hmm. Because we can't be all head and all left brain, and we can't mm-hmm. be all right brain heart because we still have to get the work done. Mm-hmm. So how can we find the right balance? So what we do is we work with corporations, number one, to determine what they're doing now. We want to really understand how the HR department is dealing with someone who is coming back to work after a life disruption. Right. Um, 
But from a heart-based healing perspective, it's really twofold. It includes mm -hmm. awareness and empathy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of folks haven't really thought about awareness before, whether it's their own inner awareness or awareness of others. Right. So we take them through a couple of exercises where we talk about inner awareness. How did you feel when you went through a life disruption? And then we ask them how did they feel when their employer or their employee or a coworker or a peer had a life disruption? How do you think they felt? So again... Practicing awareness from an inner and outer perspective, which then leads to empathy. Right. And one of the things we love, uh, we love Brene Brown. Oh, yeah. And in our uh, HOPE workshop, we actually use one of her videos that where she uh, articulates the difference between empathy and sympathy. Right. And the bottom line is empathy is putting yourself, obviously, in the shoes of another. Mm -hmm. Sympathy is just sorry or uh, sorrowful or pitiful or for someone else. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad thing, but no. there is a fine difference. And I think for success in the workplace to happen, when someone comes back, we've got to be empathetic and not sympathetic. Exactly. So in our workshops, we spend a quarter of the 90-minute workshop just talking about awareness and empathy. Mm -hmm. And that's and it gets them set up for, and then what do I say? Right. You know, that's all holding space. Yes. It's like teaching how to hold space, which is a really sacred duty. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Mm -hmm. Which, the words holding space mm -hmm. used in a corporate world, no. no. Not happening right now. Exactly. <laughs> right. So, and, and, and we had to be careful of that when we are using our language because what we right. don't want to do is turn people off very quickly mm -hmm. with, you know, a holding space. Mm -hmm. Or we talked a lot about saying, do we want to say going in? Because mm -hmm. how are people going to take that? Right. We change right. it actually to a serious thought. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. <laughs> to, having, to having serious thought. And, uh, right. and then we use the word acknowledge. But as Lisa said, once we talk through um, awareness and empathy, then we move to O for opportunities. And this mm -hmm. is where we outline specifically what are bad things to say. What are the things that are just not the right things to say? And we talk about what those are. Right. Those are pretty specific. And then we say, here are, some, here are 10 options that are good things to say or do. Because one action is just to sit with the person yeah. and say, I'm sorry, or just sit with them and let them talk to you. And again, we feel uncomfortable, but we're trying. To, we're giving people um, permission mm -hmm. to to do that. So we talk about um, what not to say, and then what to say, right. and then we do talk about um, when Lisa mentioned um, a location. What we recommend is not having a conversation with someone that is um, this private in a public setting. Sure. Now, if um, if more than one person, if a person doesn't feel comfortable. Um, doing the conversation on their own, like a, if a male isn't sure he wants to have a conversation with a female right. employee or a female doesn't want to have a conversation with a male employee, mm -hmm. then definitely pull in a human resources at that time. You mm -hmm. want to pull in someone so that you can have that conversation together. Right. So we talk through things in that manner, and we want them to have it in the office because we want the affected person, the person who's been um, disrupted, to start feeling comfortable in the workplace. The more you take them out of the workplace exactly. to have these emotional conversations, the more disconnected they are from the mm -hmm. workplace. We want them in the workplace, having conversations and feeling the empathy. Mm -hmm. And then the conversations are called ABLE conversations. And the ABLE conversations are ask, believe, listen, and encourage. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go into each one of them, but right. certainly we want to ask some very good questions and mm -hmm. we give specifics. We want the, the, the person asking the questions to believe the answers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have our own preconceived ideas. Right. And we want them to ask and really believe what they say because after you've experienced the trauma, you're speaking from your heart for a long time. You're very raw. Raw mm -hmm. and vulnerable. Absolutely. And so if, a, if an employer has the ability to say, I believe what you just told me, let's mm -hmm. see what we can do about that. Mm -hmm. And that's just empowering to the person um, that's affected to be able to continue talking about what's going on in their life. Absolutely. And then there's listen. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's okay to sit and listen mm -hmm. and not boss them, not give them something to do, not try to fix everything. Mm -hmm. I can't fix that my dad and son are murdered. Right. I just Sometimes I just need people just to listen when I do get upset or I am making a change in my mm -hmm. life about something. So just listen. And then E for able is, um, is to encourage. And so once you've asked and believed and listened, you then do have the ability to say, I encourage you to do A or I encourage you to do B, which might be journaling or it might be yoga or it might be finding a purpose. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then that takes us to our P in hope, which is purpose.
Mm -hmm. Oh, good. So then we talk about purpose in terms of personalized for that person Mm -hmm. who's experienced a life disruption. But one of the things we do, too, is before uh, before a company hires us, we have a very in-depth meeting to understand what they're doing now. Because a lot of corporations are already doing, let's say, Habitat for Humanity here in Kansas City, or they may already be doing uh, participation in Alzheimer's Walk, whatever the case may be. Christmas in October, whatever it is. Exactly. So what we try to do is really fine-tune our purpose recommendations Mm -hmm. on what the company is already doing. Wonderful. Um, Because that's so key. And a lot of corporations, you know, in their culture and in their mission statements talk about purpose, but it's different to walk that talk. So we might have it out there on a board, but we want to make sure that they're truly walking the talk on purpose. So we talk about, with managers and supervisors, we talk about how after someone has experienced a life disruption, they're often reevaluating their life. Mm -hmm. You know, they're often experiencing their own personal transformation. So how can we make sure that this person doesn't leave the company either? We want to make sure that we can retain them. And interestingly enough, we found so much phenomenal research on purpose in the workplace and how oh, that great. impacts you know, recruitment mm-hmm. and talent. For example, people were surveys and said that almost 80% of them said that if my company has a strong purpose statement and I feel like I can really participate from a purpose-driven perspective, right. my, I'm going to stay with that company longer. You mm-hmm. know, my ability to stay there is going to be higher. Mm-hmm. So a lot of um, statistics, not only on purpose, but jumping back on empathy, too. I mean, right. it's just, and especially with millennials coming in the workplace. I was just going to say, yeah, millennials are showing that they they would rather work for a company that has a strong purpose yes. than has, you know, a, a great pay plan. It's right? absolutely right, and we're mm-hmm. finding the numbers to really support that. Right. Yes. Yeah, there's good data. There's Mm -hmm. really good data on it. So when we get to purpose, what we do in our workshop is we talk to them about what does purpose look like. When we were at Garmin, for example, we gave an example of, um, and long story short, the CEO of Medtronic who developed pacemakers. Oh, my gosh. He was an engineer and experienced uh, a situation where the pacemaker that he had invented in 1952, you had to be attached to a wall, to an electrical outlet, and they had a power outage in uh, Minnesota, a tiny baby died, and then he was so motivated in his community by that tragedy, right. he's like, I have got to invent a pacemaker that's operated by a battery. And now today, in 2019, the pacemaker batteries are the size of a you know, millimeter, right. So and they're implanted inside the body. So the bottom line is purpose, fuels, innovation, and invention. So if we can work with someone when they come back to work, I grant you they're probably not going to reinvent cardiac surgery, <laughs> but... They'll have their own new purpose when it comes to the tragedy they've experienced. So how can a manager make sure, number one, that person feels like they're exploring their purpose while they're still working? Absolutely. So in the workshop, we take them through just a short visualization on what motivates them. Where are your values? What are you passionate about? So you can kind of think about your own purpose. And then when someone comes back to work, it's not immediate, but maybe a few months down the line, you might want to have a heart-to-heart with them about what they would like to see purpose-driven in their day-to-day, you know, whether it's an a initiative here in Kansas City, whether it's a national initiative, whatever that might be. How can we help support that person by acknowledging the purpose that they feel motivated about? Right. And so that's a, that's a big component of retention as well. Well, I think it is, too. And, you know, even in marriages and families and any type of group, when mm-hmm. we have a shared purpose, we're just stronger together. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. it's incredibly healing. And it, it just kind of is the tie that binds and it knits us together. So I love that you're uh, thinking about bringing purpose into this healing. Mm-hmm. A great example is that, um, and Lisa touched on this about, you know, heart and, and maybe a heart attack or something. And But if someone comes... Um, to their boss and says, I just found out that my son has type 1 diabetes. And it happened it's a, to a friend of mine. And it's a very, you know, significant life disruption for Huge. the whole family for a period of time until they get settled. Mm-hmm. And um, so then what, what the manager could do after having an able conversation mm-hmm. and understanding this a little bit better is maybe rally the, the team and say, let's go do a diabetes walk with right. Joe and his family. Right. Mm-hmm. And so um, so those are really good examples of the team coming together around purpose. Mm-hmm. And it just makes everyone stronger and then, you know, wanna wanna stay there and get their and do their work and, and mm-hmm. be a family mm-hmm. at work. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and many companies already have this strong sense of purpose. I know Andrews McMeal started Christmas in October. Mm-hmm. Hallmark is involved with Harvesters and United Way. Many companies are. So they already kind of have that built into their team building. Mm-hmm. So it's not that big of a stretch, but it gives it even more purpose, I think. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. If, right. They, if that can be channeled, that's what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. And then that moves us to E in, in hope, and that's mm-hmm. employer-employee engagement. And uh, just as you said when we, in, when we started the introduction is people don't know what to say or when to say it or how to do it. And so what we have is we call it a human recovery plan. Mm-hmm. Oh, and so many, many businesses mm-hmm. have disaster recovery plans. You know, if a tornado mm-hmm. happens or you just lose power or right. whatever. Flood or whatever. Whatever. So you have a disaster recovery plan. And we call it a human recovery plan. And mm-hmm. so in our workbook, we have a little chart that tells um, here are some very specific steps to take in the first five days. And depending on the level of trauma, Mm -hmm. you might want to repeat those five days. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe not the next five days, but maybe the next five days. You want want to give this person a little bit more tender care. Again, what you're working on is helping them have a soft landing. So you want to have an able conversation. Mm -hmm. If you haven't before they arrive, you want to have that on day one. Um, on day two, you might want to make sure that lunch is provided. Maybe it's provided not only for that person, but for their team. Mm-hmm. Or maybe maybe you've come back to work and you need to be gone another four or five days, but you're there three hours. So we want to provide you lunch and we want to give you capacity so that you can pass projects off to someone else. Good. So whoever that someone else is needs to be in there for lunch. And you all are a team now and you're doing this whole mm-hmm. pass off. So you don't want to ignore the rest of the team. In fact, the team can help build the plan. Right. And that's mm-hmm. what's that's what's really helpful. When we do a real deep dive, which would be a half day presentation, mm-hmm. then we would give much more specific ideas in E. But right now we have some examples and then we ask um, the people who are attending the workshop mm-hmm. to to give their best practices. You know, what are some things you've done? Mm-hmm. For instance, if a birthday comes around, a flower on the desk a card that says thinking of you Um, if someone's got tickets to a Chiefs game and and the person has just not gotten out of their house maybe somebody takes them to the Chiefs game just Mm -hmm. as an example Mm -hmm. those are wonderful examples thank you thank you it it helps to put some thought into this absolutely and it helps to give people practical tools you know, that's, that's what we found is that we can talk, um, you know, esoterically about hope, but when you give somebody a practical tool mm-hmm. and a chart that has day one to day five, and yeah. here's our recommendations on how to support that employee when they come back, it really brings the reality home. Mm-hmm. And it makes it simple for that team at the business. And, you know, one thing I was going to mention when we were talking about ABLE and also when that person comes back to work that first day, we did a lot of focus groups uh, the summer of 2018. And in our focus groups of HR professionals, we did a lot of role playing. And we found the worst thing that you can say to someone when they come back to work is, Well, take as long as you need, Christy. Take as long as you need. Because right. that puts the it onus on that good, person. It? it sounds right. wonderful. Exactly. But it puts the responsibility on that person to say, Well, yeah. gosh, I don't know how I'm going to finish my 92 tasks in the right. X number of time or the days allotted. So, And my head's not even on straight. Right. Right. That's right. not. They have chaos. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a, um, and that's a good, that was a good aha for a lot of HR people mm-hmm. because they, everyone has good intentions when someone of comes back. They do. And they want to solve it and they want to help and they want to fix, you know, and that's our best human intention. And sometimes we say, well, just take as long as you need. And, and that person goes and then they can kind of go from there. But it really is probably one of the worst things we can say to somebody mm-hmm. because it just makes them feel really more pressured. Well, I feel like when we say take as long as you need, we're kind of backing away too. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're yeah. not getting the action. Yeah. We're putting the onus on them to mm-hmm. go Absolutely. fix themselves mm-hmm. and let me know when you're ready to come back <laughs> and right. then come back ready. I want you back a hundred percent. Right. You know, go go fix yourself. And that's one of the things we talk about. Standard operating procedures mm-hmm. are um, are just just using an EAP without an umbilical cord to the manager or the team. Mm-hmm. The EAP is great. It can right. it can be used very well, and human resources can be used well. But if you just push someone over to that and you aren't staying engaged with them mm-hmm. with the able conversation, then you really lose control of the situation. And and what we want as an employer is we want them to come back at some point. We want you know in in a hundred percent. But we're gonna, it's going to take some time. And I like how Lisa said, um, fix. You know, we feel like that we, the person who's been affected should 
we want to fix them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can't fix death. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You can't change it. It is a new reality. You can't, it it just isn't possible. Mm -hmm. And you can't fix if a child has cancer and how sad you are and how how distraught you are. Mm -hmm. What you can do is you can make everything else around them as soft and nice as possible mm-hmm. and and just take off all the hard edges that you can Absolutely. and so that's what um that's what we're working on with the hope workshop well mm-hmm. i love that there, there's besides the grief there's also oh my gosh i'm responsible for so many projects i'm responsible for clients i'm responsible for people mm-hmm. how am i going to do that right. while i'm managing my own heart and managing right. my own head and just um are there tools within this program to just kind of talk about how we reallocate things. Mm-hmm. How do we manage mm-hmm. with it, why this person is healing? Well, mm-hmm. are you talking about the person who's disrupted, or are you talking about the employer? I'm talking about the whole team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think through the, through the whole workshop, we touch mm-hmm. on what does that look like, with right. starting with understanding as a manager that we want you to be aware of yourself, want to have inner awareness of what's going on as a manager. If you're feeling uncomfortable that that person's coming in, mm-hmm. then maybe you should do some practice role-playing with somebody else in the office That's a good idea. before they come in. Mm-hmm. So in idea. our workshop, we have them practice role-playing with whoever they're sitting mm-hmm. next to. That's great. We have them do an interaction right there in front of us, and then oh. we have them switch roles yeah. and do it again. Mm-hmm. So they have some one-on-one interaction. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. And mm-hmm. then they're practicing the able conversation. Mm-hmm. They're practicing the asking. And it's really, Christy, in the asking where they're figuring out, what is your capacity today, Christy? What is your capacity exactly. right now? And if you said, I can give you 30 minutes. Okay, let's figure out what we can do mm-hmm. in 30 mm-hmm. minutes, okay? And mm-hmm. then if you start you know, um, wanting off a little bit, I'd be like, okay, why don't you, we'll meet again in another day. Why don't you go ahead and head home and you can take like your half day or whatever, or maybe you sit quietly in your pod and you do email and then you might come out and say, I can give another 30 minutes. You just, we're trying to give people the option of not just coming back in and thinking they have to do full force. And that's why we call it a soft landing. No, I love that because sometimes people will come back from a disruption and come back from a tragedy and they want to be anywhere but home sometimes. Home is not the healing place, mm-hmm. right? They want to have, be distracted. They want to be giving themselves. They want to have a purpose. They want to be around others, which they might not have at home. And so having a, having a plan, I think, is very good. Mm-hmm. Because I think the normal reaction is, why don't you just take the rest of the day off? To sit at home and mm-hmm. bounce around the walls, that's not mm-hmm. always a, a great option. Mm-hmm. Right. That's no, a I good point. That. Right. And, you know, I was um, one of the things we teach people is really about absenteeism versus presenteeism. Mm-hmm. Because one of the things that we've discovered is, say that person that many describe is coming back, and they only have 30 minutes, mm-hmm. and then they go back to their cubicle or, or their office to do some emails. They might be present, but the term is presenteeism. They're sitting in their chair, but their mind really isn't there. Their mind is planning a funeral. Their mind is writing an obituary. Or their mind is worrying about their dog who just passed away. I mean, it really is a scope of of disruption. Mm -hmm. Um, So specifically... You know, what does it look like when you're absent? Well, you know, because they're not sitting in the chair. And the absenteeism right. numbers are staggering in the United States. It's like, a, I think it's like sixteen eighty-five, so $1,685 per employee in oh, the United wow. States in 2015 was spent on someone just being absent. So they're not in their, they're not in their chair. Right. But presenteeism, the newest phenomenon of really kind of uh, research and quantitative um, putting dollars to the to the situation. Mm-hmm. Presenteeism is you're sitting there, but you're not really there. Right. So the cost of that is almost a third of work productivity is lost due to presenteeism. Wow. A third. That's and that's even still being studied now. We did a lot right. of research, and the latest we found was like 10 years ago on some research on, because it's a new, it's really a new trend in organizational right. management right well, now. Well, and work has changed so much. Yes. Really, in the last in 10 years. In terms of remote working. And, oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right. But when people will show up, when I would show up and try to get things done, I would have a little bit of limited capacity, but no one knew that because they didn't know how to ask the question. Right, right. They might come in and say, um, do you have a minute? And that minute might turn into 45 minutes. And by then I was exhausted. It's exhausting to be 
um, grieving and you have your life so disrupted and to know mm-hmm. what am I going to do with Lucas tonight and you know how are we going to handle his sleeping and etc. Because mm-hmm. so, you had another son at home. Yes and he was 12 and oh. so so not only when someone has some some kind of life disruption that they're experiencing you've got to think about their other family members Absolutely. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, what I was going to mention is I came back with foggy brain. I mentioned that oh. I came back with foggy brain. I realized right. after several weeks at about six weeks when I really started trying to meet with clients again I couldn't do math and I had to say to a co-worker can you please come in this meeting I I, I had cre- helped create the spreadsheet that I couldn't even articulate right. I knew what it was for but I couldn't make my brain understand how to do the process it's hard to explain but I could see it I just knew I couldn't do it no that is the vagal nerve shutting down that is mm-hmm. stress yes right mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. I learned a lot about that, and I learned that I had black holes in my brain because mm-hmm. they would ask me questions, and I'd say, I remember I used to know that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where I learned that it would have been helpful if they said, what is your capacity right now? Mm-hmm. And if I said 30 minutes, we really should have set a timer that said 30 minutes. If I said two hours, we should have set a timer that said two hours and be very mm-hmm. respectful of what that person told you because mm-hmm. they're probably giving you more time than they really have in the first place. Right. And the company does need to exist and the company does need to get projects done. Mm-hmm. Um, but it may be that I'm just passing projects off for the for a couple of days while I can go, you know, get resituated for my in my own life. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, Mindy, something that you said um it gave me another question. You talked about Lucas and how he was dealing with things. Have you thought about bringing this program to a school? Interesting question. So That's we right. we have yes <laughs> we have we have been solicited by um, by a school district, and so they're looking for funding right now. Mm-hmm. Um, they would be one of our beta clients. So we're what we're searching for right this minute right. are a handful of beta clients, and mm-hmm. what that means to us is we're still building our business. Right. Um, we're looking for someone. We'll, we'll do our workshop at a lower price for them, and then we're asking for a lot of feedback from mm-hmm. them. Right. Um, so that we can do a pre-call and then handle the workshop. And, and then do an after call and mm-hmm. call a debrief and then learn, do we want to, do they want us to continue to stay with their company and do more or how can we reformat, um, how many channels do we want to use? We've, been alre- we've already been asked to um, look at digital, look at doing a Skype. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're looking at different channels of how to um, provide the material to people who aren't in their um, mm-hmm. home base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, this, and there was a school, there's been a school in one of our um, workshops, and they've already called Lisa, and I think we have a tentative date. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. And the interesting thing, like on a school, in this particular situation, there's been, for example, a teacher whose spouse passed away. Right. Well, then he or she is going back into the classroom and has to be pretty immediately on. So how do the principals talk to her? How do the this school was looking for how to, how can we teach the principals and the administrators how to respond mm-hmm. and interact to a teacher who's coming back to work after a life disruption, right. knowing that how he or she feels in the classroom is directly impacting that child's education. Absolutely, so we need them to be present, mm-hmm. and when right. it comes to teaching, so right. they're looking to the Hope Workshop on how can we help our employees. Okay. Now I think there's a whole another second, you know, a second level. Of course, for students, students, and Absolutely. you know, so much is going on right. in schools today. And how can we talk to each other? And how can we have an able conversation with our classmates? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, in schools, of course, they have school counselors, and counselors mm-hmm. are trained to talking to talk sure. to the children who are affected. But you know, maybe something else is needed for all the classmates. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody's going through something in your in your grade, and you need to have some peer to peer conversation. Absolutely. At um, Blue Valley High School, when Lucas was um, a sophomore, uh, the football coach passed away suddenly. Mm. So we had experienced our tragedy, and then now Blue Valley High School lost their football coach, and um, he had an aneurysm. I mean, it was it was sudden. Oh. It was horrible, and and young. He was young. And had a young wife and young children, Aww. and a beloved, beloved oh, football right. coach too. And Lucas, who had been through all of the suffering himself and was still in it, actually, absolutely, immediately wanted to be at the school to talk to his peers. He Aww. said, "I want to be there because I I know what they're feeling, and I want I want to be there." So I do believe that if we can get into a situation where we're talking to um, some grieving students that they will know what to do, and then those are the people who will be able to help us the best go into, um, go into a school and have a conversation. Hi, this is Christy. I just want to say that we here at Radiate Wellness hope you're enjoying this podcast. 
It's free to you, and we hope that you find it informative and inspirational, heck, even fun. We have just three small asks of you to help us radiate growth. First, please hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening on. That way, you'll receive a notification every time that we have a new podcast episode out. Next, please give us a thumbs up, a like, or a five-star review. If you're feeling inspired, a positive review wouldn't hurt. These two small things will help others find us when they're searching for great podcasts. Finally, please tell your friends about the Radiate Wellness Podcast. Better yet, show them how to find us and how to subscribe. If everyone did that, we would double our audience. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think it's so needed. I mean, it's so needed everywhere. Well, you I mean, know, that's what we found, too. To... It's so many different industries. Yeah. You know, we've even talked about, like, financial services. When someone, oh. if you're a uh, financial advisor right. and your client comes in, so many times they come in, I've heard this one anecdote, yes. the shoebox. Yes, they do. And yeah. the, let's say a woman, for example, maybe an older woman is coming in, her husband has passed away, and there's a shoebox of statements. And not only is she grieving and upset, they're also trying to organize her financial. So what can that client, can that advisor, who perhaps has never had a life disruption, perhaps they're younger, or they're starting out in, in financial services, what, how can we help them have a conversation with that client when they come back in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, any company where you're having to deal with clients, where you're having to deal with other vendors, when you're having mm-hmm. to deal with internal clients, I mean, it's so needed just to learn how to talk to each other, right, mm-hmm. right, and how to take care of each right. other. And Christy, the other um, sector that we're looking at is healthcare, yeah. and so mm-hmm. we're looking at um, a little bit with compassion fatigue yeah. and the stress that yeah. um, that physicians and nurses in particular are experiencing. Absolutely. And the, um, the suicide rate is not only going up just across the board for teenagers mm-hmm. right now, it's going up in the medical industry. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Nurses on the floor who are really struggling themselves, and so Absolutely. we're we're looking at what what does that look like for mm-hmm. us, and we've been in conversation with a with a local hospital on on how we might be able to help them with compassion fatigue. Oh, mm-hmm. that's an excellent idea. I, mm-hmm. Do you have a resource for you, Lisa Adams, who was on the podcast? She mm-hmm. is a yes. Yes. Know her. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I Lisa you know. Lisa Cooper knows Lisa Adams more than I do, but I've met her. I met right. her at the um, Live Vitality Conference right. yeah. that we yeah. just attended. Yeah, right. Absolutely. She is truly an expert in compassion fatigue. Exactly. From her experience. She really <laughs> is. Her, mm-hmm. She literally wrote the book on it. No, right. That's a wonderful right. thing. Yeah, we would definitely use her as a resource. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Minnie, something that you said that kind of sparked another question is that. You know, sometimes we have grief and tragedy and disruption that's immediate, right? Someone has a stroke, a heart attack, an accident, a murder. But then sometimes, like Lisa, your mother, she was ill for a while. Mm -hmm. It wasn't exactly expected that she was going to pass, but you knew that she was ill and that was a possibility. And so sometimes, you know, our disruption is expected and drawn out and sometimes Mm -hmm. it's abrupt Mm -hmm. so do you address a difference in how we approach that well interesting uh, one of the women today at central exchange came up to me and you know her mother has alzheimer's and her mother is still alive but Mm -hmm. her mother's not her mother and hasn't been her mother for two and a half years right so you know she Mm -hmm. was telling me what would help her in her workplace Mm-hmm. Because it's as if her mother has already passed away, mm-hmm. and the stress of that is is awful, you right. know, in Not terms of imagine. interactions and that kind of thing. So we talked about, you know, there's different kinds of grief. You know, there's obviously the death of a loved one, mm-hmm. and, you know, different kinds of loved ones, right. and but then you've got someone who's also going through something, and we need to support that employee as well. Absolutely. And that employee is not getting bereavement, and that employee is not getting FMLA, you mm-hmm. know, that, but that employee needs to leave to, to help the parent. So right. what can we do? Right. How can we help them stay present in the workplace? Right, exactly. and part of that would be a conversation that we would have with an employer. So um, when we did meet with Garmin, we had the opportunity to to learn a little bit about what they um, offer and and some of their specifics. And um, and one they they mentioned that they do have a um, an FMLA and that the longest that is available right now for someone um, with a specific incident would be three months. And I said, that's amazing because if they don't have to take the three months all at one time, you can stretch that out to six months and you can really give that person a lot of flexibility and leeway. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to encourage them, and I did, that, um, that that is a very good benefit just to, in an able conversation, to be sure and let the disrupted person know, well, we have this three months. 
but you don't have to take it all at the same time. Because, Mm -hmm. for the instance, you mentioned someone might want to come to work Mm -hmm. immediately Mm because they don't want to be at home. Mm -hmm. But, Christy, you and I know, and Lisa, that at some point they're going to crash. So they may come right back to work, and they may get in work and get in work, and about six weeks later they really may be crashing. And right. that's when the FMLA can come into play for them, if at that yeah. point that they need it. So it's just helpful. That's why we want people to continue to have able conversations from the very beginning through several months, you know, one a week, one a day, for depending on what, you know, the relationship mm-hmm. is and what someone needs, so that we know what's going on. What happened in my situation, and I know that it was meant well, was, Mindy, take all the time that you need. Right. And then in about five to six weeks, I was asked, when are you coming back? When will we have you back 100%? I'd like you back at 100%. And I was just floored. And when will you be traveling? And so I tried traveling in September. Mm-hmm. Um, the murders were in April, and I traveled in September. And um, I cried. Through the, I cried when I was on the plane. I cried yes. at every client meeting. Luckily, they're all clients that I'd had for years and years. Mm-hmm. But I literally cried through all of them. And I just said, here's your review book. I'm just going to cry. And just let me know if you have any questions. And, right. and they handled it fine. But um, I was distressing. I, didn't, mm-hmm. I don't want to go and cry in front of people. I mean, right. especially in a professional situation. Um, but they understood it. But that doesn't mean that that's how I want to be portrayed. Um, And so it would have been helpful if I had had, if I felt like I had been given much longer, Mm -hmm. Um, but I felt I had a responsibility. So I went back and and just kind of moved into that a little bit too quickly. Right. Or even Mm -hmm. felt like there was a plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we talked about how take as long as you need is not maybe the most helpful thing. Correct. Right. It's like, let's, let's. Find out a plan. Let's figure out a plan. Defining expectations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Having a plan and defining expectations. And then that's what the employer engagement is as well. The human recovery plan is, let's have an idea before Christy comes back in. What are we all going to do for Mm -hmm. Christy? Mm -hmm. One of the things we just haven't mentioned, but which is kind of a fun anecdote, is that in a team, there's always the person who does not want to sit with you or me and hold her hand and cry with us. Right. There's the person who says, I'm not the nurturer, I really love Christy, but I just don't want to see her crying. Mm-hmm. So that person can be given a job to go get lunch. They can right. be given a job to, hey, Christy needs flowers that day. I'll go get the flowers and I'll put them on her desk. And then there probably is a nurturing person who says, I'm going to sit with Christy when she mm-hmm. needs me. Mm-hmm. So that puts, it gives the team, um, each it gives each of them a job. Mm-hmm. And it makes them feel like they're part of the recovery plan. Mm-hmm. That's I think that's very valuable because we are a team when we're at mm-hmm. work, you know, and right. we spend so much of our waking time with the people we work with. Right. Mm-hmm. And we t- talk about them being a family and everything. But... We need to have tasks in our family. We need to have that connection and that support in the family. So, no, I, mm-hmm. I love this. I've been really excited about this project ever since Lisa first told me about it a few months ago. Uh, I think it's so needed. Um, so I, I understand that there's a lot of this program that you just kind of stumbled on in your own journey, Mindy. I did. I, I walked through it painfully. Right. You walk through it very painfully. Yes. And now you help people so that they don't have to. Right. I hope so. I mean, right. I mean, I think it can, I, I'm not saying that we're going to take away the pain. Right. We're just, we're trying to take away some of the awkwardness mm-hmm. and we're trying to give people permission. I tell, when we, when, when we speak, I say, I'm, we're, we're giving you permission to have these conversations and giving you the tools so you feel comfortable sitting down and asking questions and it. And, and we give them specifics on how to ask and specific right. things on what to ask to get right. the conversation started. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I, it's, it's still healing for me. I mean, I, I will never be 100% healed. I know that, and that's okay. I can live with that. Mm-hmm. A tree can grow without a branch. Mm-hmm. So I'm a tree without a branch, but I'm still growing. And, um, and that's, you know, what I love about it. I love that about healing. It's, um, it can be different from different aspects, and this is part of my journey. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad to have Lisa with me. Because mm-hmm. Lisa's really good at this. You've been doing this for quite some time, Lisa. You've been on our podcast before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you and I present Love Never Dies together. Sometimes we do it separately, but many times we team up. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm excited that we've got another one of these November. workshops coming mm-hmm. up in November, November 17th. And it's been so satisfying to see people heal. 
right. and to see people. And again, they're not 100% healed, and they're still missing a branch. I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. They're still missing a branch. We're all missing branches of mm -hmm. um, whether it's a, a loss of someone we've loved or some sort of life disruption. But we're helping people with the day-to-day -day inspiration, you know, and hope. And, and this, you know, helping people when they go back to work. Mm -hmm. and, and, and recognizing that our teams are like family in mm -hmm. some situations. And to some people that maybe don't have family, right. it truly They're is their family. family. Mm -hmm. And so how can we, you know, really focus on conversations? And, and you and I have talked before, death is kind of a taboo topic. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be able to say, read, mm -hmm. you know, and bill or, you know, people you've lost or people I've lost because so often... You know, when someone comes back to work, they're scared to even say the name of the person. Exactly. Or talk about their children or talk right. about their parents so, or talk about their spouse. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So right. we're bringing it up. We're bringing it mm -hmm. up. Yes. Early on in our conversations, <laughs> we would joke about the fact that if somebody doesn't want to talk about death, they can bring us in because we'll talk about it. You know, so so in, you know, as you, you talked just very briefly about what does this look like going forward and, mm -hmm. and we're hitting, you know, hitting the road, uh, we do envision that we will have a channel where... It's called boots on the ground, and um, and if a tragedy happens or an event happens or or someone just has somebody that's you know had a life mm -hmm. disruption and it's and it's simple, we want to have a big enough team that that we have at Workplace Healing where we can send someone in a street team, mm -hmm. a street mm -hmm. team exactly. where mm -hmm. we can send in the street team and they mm -hmm. can and they can help. They might be there an hour, they might be two hours, they mm -hmm. might be there in conjunction with the EAP, mm -hmm. but they'll be giving practical tools and and practical advice mm -hmm. on you know, let's get a plan together for this person. Or let's say the disrupted is there and our person comes in, then they can be a, a like a, a mediator mm -hmm. and say, let's have a conversation, you know, mm -hmm. all together. Facilitate it. Facilitate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because I know you spoke at Garmin and there was a tragedy at Garmin. Some of the employees, the engineers were shot in a bar in mm -hmm. Olathe, Kansas. And and Lisa, I believe you talked about this, how they brought in grief counselors. They brought in people to talk and some of the employees didn't even want to talk to them, right? Mm -hmm. So every company can have these disruptions, and they can be um, you know, quite devastating. And just having, knowing that there's a team that can come in, I mm -hmm. think is very, very helpful because you, you can't plan for these things. Right, right. And right. we want to be there to assist the human resources department Absolutely. and help them get everyone you know, back on track as well as they can and, mm -hmm. and give them the assistance that they need. And really, we like to say, you know, workplace healing is innovative. Why is it innovative? It's because we're talking about things like empathy, right. awareness, mm -hmm. you know, heart-based healing in a head-based world. So these are innovative concepts mm -hmm. that have not been practiced in corporate America outside right. of an EAP. Right. And so it's a, it's a new concept, and it's a new um, approach to mm -hmm. healing, a new approach in terms of when an employee comes back, mm -hmm. because it's not a matter of if a life disruption occurs, it's a matter of when that occurs. Absolutely. And we can't expect that person to uh, come back and at 801 be happy face mm -hmm. because Absolutely. they're not. They're not. And that elects, that um, immediately affects the bottom line mm -hmm. and, and productivity. You know, what we, what we, Lisa did a good job this morning. We presented at Central Exchange and she reminded people that life disruptions can be happy disruptions. So, mm -hmm. so um, adopting a child. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Had, okay. Didn't even mm -hmm. know that. Mm -hmm. So adopting a child, mm -hmm. that was probably a life disruption for a period of Huge. time. And I didn't get FMLA. So. Right. I didn't get um, the, um, the, the short-term disability, you know, to welcome mm -hmm. home this mm -hmm. baby, which, you know, if you give birth, you have, oh, mm -hmm. maternity leave, that's yeah. the word, right. sorry. Yeah. And also I had a couple of strokes, and so sometimes words yeah. mm -hmm. just don't come. So mm -hmm. anyway, but, you know, maternity leave, um, moving to a new house, my gosh, you need time off when you move to a new house. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're happy life disruptions. Right. Right. happy ones, But too. disruptions nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we, in our focus group, we had one of our um, attendees said, mm -hmm. I don't have anything negative going on, but I am very disrupted. She said, I have, I have mm -hmm. one going, going to college. I have, yes. I have another one that's going to go to college next year, and then there's a wedding in the family. And she said, and I'm, I'm disrupted by all of these things. Absolutely. And so when she got to work, she was, she was really being, con she was concentrating on her own awareness of how present was she, and was she present enough for other people mm -hmm. who were having their own disruptions. And so she was looking at it from a different perspective, but she really I appreciated that. that. Mm -hmm. Just being Absolutely. more aware mm -hmm. that she was physically being disrupted, and so she, when she was at work, she needed to maybe let people know, 
I need 30 minutes and then I'll be back. And then she might go take care mm-hmm. of some things and then come back and then be better, you know, be more present. And be more present. I think mm-hmm. that's the key. Mm-hmm. And we all have these disruptions, like you said. And I think when, you know, when children leave the house, when they're going to college, et cetera, that's a bigger disruption than a lot of people would like to think. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Everybody handles yes. it differently. Now, mm-hmm. another question I do have for both of you is, Lisa, you're in marketing. Mm-hmm. And Mindy, you're in finance. Yes. Mm-hmm. So how do you approach HR? I mean, how do you feel like you, you know, can sit at the table at HR? Well, I think our backgrounds, and I'll speak for me first, uh, mm-hmm. our background, my background in corporate America in Kansas City and Chicago and big companies and small you were companies. Because with Sprint. And I was at Sprint for a while, too. Mm-hmm. Um mostly on the advertising agency side in my career, mm-hmm. but um, and different size companies, as I mentioned. So um, it's been very corporate, you know, and my clients mm-hmm. have been very corporate. They've been um, financial services corporations mm-hmm. and, um, you know, and some very, um, I will call them serious companies, serious Fortune 100 companies. Right, so, straight-laced, straight uh, Right, straight right, jacket, yeah. and I think that... Um, in those corporations, um, they have wonderful HR departments that mm-hmm. are, they have a lot going on with benefits, with, um, you know, all the, the tasks that they manage on a day-to-day basis, but there really wasn't anything like us in terms of workplace healing mm-hmm. to help them out when there were disruptions that came along. I mean, just a, one example I can say that came to mind when I was working in Chicago um, at one of my ad agencies, we had an associate at the firm um, commit suicide one night. Mm-hmm. And the next morning, um, she wasn't at work. And she was 23, entry-level mm-hmm. advertising. Um, dear, dear, wonderful young woman. And, but nobody really talked about it. Right. Uh, and it was very awkward. And um, at that time, there just weren't a lot of opportunities or um, opportunities at work for us even to talk about her. Right. And, and that, I believe, is very dysfunctional for the team. Uh, for the team that's missing has an empty chair, mm-hmm. and um, in retrospect, you know we could have obviously um, come in and talked to the team about not we can't have an able conversation, but we can talk with each other and have an able conversation with peers. We can't have it with her, but we can have it with peers that's on how do you way. feel about that and just just talking more and, and having a head um, in a head based world, having a heart based conversation in mm-hmm. that head based environment. Right. Well, so. even at Garmin with their employees being murdered, everybody was disrupted. I mean, it was sure. heavy grief. It could have been, there are so many people who work in these large companies who are from other countries, who mm-hmm. might look a little bit different. Of course, this was, again, a white supremacist. Mm-hmm. And um, they could think, what does that mean for me? What does it mean for my family? Am I safe? Mm-hmm. Is it okay to grieve? Or, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of complicated questions about that. I love it. And so, Mindy, how do you approach it? it HR. Well, as mm-hmm. a as a co-founder of the company and the CEO, we were we were a small firm, and I was the HR. Oh. So I had I go. had some experience. I I'm not a certified HR person, mm-hmm. but I but I took on the role of HR. And right. so what's interesting when you ask what if if it had happened to someone else, how would it have been handled? Well, if it had happened to someone else, I was the person in the HR role. Mm-hmm. But I want to tell you, Christy, our EAP who we had mm-hmm. never called me. Really. Yes. Wow. And so I just have to think that they had to have known about the tragedy. It was pretty public. It was yes. all over the news. I think it made international news. And and I would have thought they would have realized we were one of their clients that right. it happened to us. But I will tell you, if they called, they never reached me. Um, so to my knowledge, so so we had um, a marketing person came in. I know of. I know a marketing friend and person came mm-hmm. in before I got there. And my team and my company had a communication plan, a communication strategy. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they did that, which mm-hmm. was great. Mm-hmm. Right. But they didn't have a Mindy strategy mm-hmm. for yeah. them or for me. Like, what do we say to Mindy? And so right. um, I, I had to do a lot of the ice breaking. So at the first oh. lunch that I had with them when I was back in the office by myself, we had, we had a lunch where Len and Lucas and I went in and had lunch, and it was horribly sad. It was just miserably sad. And we right. all just sat there and kind of looked at each other. No one wanted to talk. No one wanted to say anything. And then when I came back in for a lunch, um, because we had a lunch once a week as a team, Mm -hmm. it was horrible. And I talked to a girlfriend about it, and she said, she said, sweetie, she said, you're going to have to give them permission to talk about their kids. Yes. And I said, okay. And so at the next lunch, through tears, I said, you can talk about your kids because I'm going to talk about Reed and Lucas. And so then I gave them permission. 
And what Lisa and I want to do is we want to try to break the ice from the other side. We want to help that yes. disrupted person not have to be the person to say, yes. you can talk yeah. about the kids. We mm-hmm. want the employer yes. and the boss to ask those questions. Hey, Christy, when can, when can we mention your child's name or when can we mention your spouse's name and 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 have that conversation with them so that when the team comes in they know I want to mention their name and talk about them because that keeps them alive it that does. keeps them, that it really keeps them does. alive for all of us mm-hmm. yeah. right and it helps create a team mm-hmm. and a corporation that has right. empathy that has empathy. And that exactly. truly is the bottom line. You know, having empathy at work, and it affects productivity, as we know. It affects retention. It affects recruitment. It affects ROI. It affects everything. And ultimately, when a company has gone through the HOPE workshop, they would be workplace healing certified. Mm-hmm. And our mission and our future vision is to have it be a thing mm-hmm. <laughs> when a company is workplace certified. And if I'm, if I'm a young person starting my career and I'm in my 20s and I'm looking at various companies to interview at and I can see that two of the five companies I'm interviewing at are workplace healing certified and I know that someday I'm going to need that, mm-hmm. then that's going to make me want to go with that company. So it's a strong recruiting tool and it's an important tool that um, we've, got to wait, we've got to change the way business is done and change the way, but yet still keep our eye on financial performance and the success of a corporation, but we've got to support these employees from an empathetic perspective while they're in, this, while they're in the workday. Oh, I love that. I yeah. love that. Very, very well said. Thank you. <laughs> you two have been practicing this. Very well said. Well, yeah. we, we did a lot of research, and actually, um, we initially thought that we would be doing a four-hour um, half-day presentation, mm-hmm. and then another. We do an HO presentation and then a PE presentation. Now, HO is, is heart. healing, heart, oh, is heart, gotcha. heart and opportunities, and then mm-hmm. purpose and engagement. So gotcha. we thought we'd do a half-day presentation and a half-day presentation. Right. And so a lot of our initial practice and reading and writing things out was this four hours well now mm-hmm. we've taken that material and squished it into 90 minutes mm-hmm. which is still a what? little hard for us mm, yeah. it's a little tough that's we a tend to talk yeah. we, are, <laughs> we, so we have a lot to share there's a lot to talk about with yeah. that and we have a lot of examples to share and so mm-hmm. we're we're right. working at being a little bit more succinct but still getting the message across no mm-hmm. i love that and i love and it and people love mm-hmm. stories too they do and that's the thing too when we can tell stories about actual examples Mm -hmm. and almost like a a, a case scenarios, if you will, then it really brings it home for people and they can say, wow, I can see how that would work on my team or I can see how that would work in my company because we can't just present data and we can't just talk. We really need to do engaging storytelling Mm -hmm. that they can put themselves in the shoes of what we're talking about and play it out in conversations. Mm -hmm. I love that. So our workshops are very, very interactive Mm -hmm. and um, just a ton of back and forth and a lot of um, just really the do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. Speaking of do's and don'ts, before Mm -hmm. we before we end this Mm -hmm. episode, I wanted to talk about like what do you say, what do you not say? Mm -hmm. Can we run through that? Absolutely. Let's start. Let's start with a few. What do you not say? What do you Mm -hmm. not say? (laughs) Okay. So in the event of a death, you Mm -hmm. would not want to say to someone, um, "He's in a better place." Not good. No, not good. You also don't want to say to someone, "At least he was here for a long life." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or if you had a miscarriage at least you know you can get pregnant that's a particularly painful one for me anything that starts Mm -hmm. with at least yes anything that that starts with at least is not something that you want to be saying right Um, another one that is uh, is not a good one is to say well she brought it on herself yes you don't want to say that no don't want to say that but I will tell you people do I'm sure they do. People have said it. So I had a woman say to me one time, didn't know me from Adam. Um, we were sitting at a football game together, and I had on white bracelets at the time that said, remember Re and remember Popeye. And she asked me about the bracelets. And so I said, one represents my dad and my son, and they were murdered in it. And she said, um, everything happens for a reason, and they're in a better place. And I just was like, ah. Mm. So I said, you know, I said... I just, I don't agree with you. I said, I just want you to know that um, I, I appreciate heaven and I love heaven. I happen to be a Christian, so I'm okay with heaven. Um, but I don't think that there, I would rather them be with me. And, Absolutely. and um, in terms of everything happened for a reason, I don't think that that was planned. I don't, you know, the shooter planned it. So, 
those are those are not good things to say. Mm -hmm. And then Lisa's got in her hand our takeaway yes. card. Yes. That we will give you, and it's got top, ten, top best ten best things. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. And you know, it's always we always can say I'm sorry. You know, oh, that's right. always the number one. Right. But all, it's sometimes the best thing to do is not to say anything and just to be with that person. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and of course it depends on personality types, but just to simply be with that person for a minute or two right. is all it can take. Because then they know you care. Right. Yeah. I'm reminded of a Winnie the Pooh story. Yes. Where Eeyore, the little donkey, sad donkey. Yes. Uh, his, his friends eat... Uh, <laughs> Pooh and Piglet mm -hmm. said, we haven't seen you around, Eeyore. Where have you been? And Eeyore says, I've just been very sad and not very, very fun to be around. Mm -hmm. So I haven't been out. And they said, well, we'll just sit with you then. Mm -hmm. And he said, why are you doing that? Because that's what you do with friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. When they're not feeling their best, you yes. sit with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I just posted yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just posted How funny. it. Two, 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 two days, days ago. ago. Yeah. Yes, I just posted it. Yeah, two, right. couple, a couple of days. It's ago. a wonderful just story. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a wonderful story, and mm -hmm. it's not that awkward. I mean, everyone yeah. thinks, "Well, I just sit there." That's awfully awkward. Mm -hmm. Just to be with them. Yeah, mm -hmm. just sit there. Yes, to be with someone, especially if um, it's a life change for someone and they're home alone now. Yes. And they're going to be alone. And it's yes. very helpful to just go be with that person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, take your laptop, take a book, and just be in the house with them mm -hmm. so that they aren't alone all the time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's huge. Yes. Okay, so we talked about what not to say. Mm -hmm. What is helpful to say? Okay, what are some other things? Well, we've got on our top ten best things. I love this. Um, you know, some of the things we say too are, are to bring up memories and I think that's an important one you right. know because sometimes we had an anecdote uh, in one of our focus groups and she had gone back to work after her husband had passed mm -hmm. away and her her work friends knew after having an able conversation with her that it would bring her heart some joy mm -hmm. if they posted some cute pictures of she and her husband at an office party that they had yeah. at, at the office, actually. So the pictures were easy to get. So mm -hmm. when she went back to her cubicle, there were actually photos in the cube of she and her husband, and that brought her joy. I love because that. Because people, some people would be like, well, I'm scared to put a picture of, um, you know, right. her husband the in deceased her office. Person. The deceased person. Mm -hmm. But instead, it was just a wonderful effect of, wow, my team really took the extra effort to really think about, they're posting a favorite memory. Absolutely. You know, they're showing a favorite memory. They're remembering my husband in a positive way. Right. So that's an important thing. That's mm -hmm. an important thing. And we always say, too, like, um, you know, I'm, I'm here for you. And this is something, too, you know, just to have someone know that, let's say, during the workday, um, whether it's lunch or how the, however the day unfolds, just to let them know that they're there and they care. Again, that's empathy in the workplace. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, maybe, we, and maybe take them out for a walk if the right. weather's nice. Say, that's mm -hmm. a really nice you know thing. what, let's go take a walk and then just mm -hmm. you know chat about mm -hmm. whatever. Because in that conversation, that could be an able conversation, mm -hmm. walking in this space of work but outside, walking mm -hmm. privately, having a, a private conversation, or being quiet. You can mm -hmm. do either. But just being with someone and, you know, fresh air. And yes. move, fresh air and movement yes. are sure. healing in themselves. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. if you have a person with you, it's just that friend you know, that is showing that they care. Yes. I and love that. I will add, this morning in our Central Exchange workshop, mm -hmm. there was a young woman who was about 30, and she has people reporting to her. And she said, help me understand how I can implement empathy in the workplace when I have never had a loss in my life. I haven't lost a dog. I haven't lost a parent. And I, all my grandparents, she even had a great-grandparent that are still right. alive. So, and she hasn't had, she's not married, she hasn't had a divorce. I mean, so she's, um, hasn't she's had. She's pure. She, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she's pure vanilla. Exactly. And so she's we, rare. We talked about, though, you know, empathy. And, for example, when you learn empathy, you don't have to have experienced always the specific tragedy to have empathy right. for someone at work. But if you can practice putting yourself in their shoes mm -hmm. and practice empathy in terms of, as Brene Brown says, not you, not saying at least, and, and just going into the hole with them and just being with them, mm -hmm. then that's a helpful tool. You don't have to have had an experience to be empathetic. Absolutely. And that's an important mm -hmm. notion as we train younger managers as well. No, I think that's a wonderful mm -hmm. point. I mean, we've mm -hmm. all had something. Mm -hmm. Well, typically at, at my mm -hmm. age, I mean, I'm in my 50s. I mean, my friends' parents are all passing away. Right. And, and it's very, very common now. So, but Absolutely. if you're younger, 
you're mm-hmm. in a whole different mindset. Right, and she Absolutely. hasn't she hasn't had any significant life disruption, so mm-hmm. we were letting her know just to, to be able to have awareness mm-hmm. and to acknowledge, just acknowledging that someone is concerned and upset is going to be helpful for them to take the next step forward. It mm-hmm. is. No, mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. And I love that you give practical tips. Sometimes mm-hmm. people are just at a loss. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, here's a list of things that I can do, what we can talk about. These are my action steps, mm-hmm. rather than this is big and I don't know how to address it. Right. right. Like you right. said earlier on, the elephant in the room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the elephant in the room. How, what do we do? Mm-hmm. How do we talk about it? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, both of you, thank you so much. Is there anything that you feel like we've not mentioned or you think is important to mention that we haven't talked about? We've covered a lot of ground. Yeah, we did. I mean, in, t- in terms of the workshop, I think we, we really gave you a, a lot of information and mm-hmm. specifics about how we do the workshop. I mean, people can reach us through our website, right. which is WorkplaceHealing.com. WorkplaceHealing.com. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They can also find Lisa Cooper on LinkedIn. They mm-hmm. can find Mindy Corporan on LinkedIn. And they can find Workplace Healing on LinkedIn. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. I want to put all of those websites, handles, okay. et cetera, et cetera, how to get in touch with you um, in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So hopefully if there's someone who's working at a company or a school or an organization mm-hmm. that can use this expertise, mm-hmm. I think it's very helpful and beneficial, and I would love for people to reach out and contact you as you're really growing this idea and this concept. Thank, I'm just, you. Thank you. I hate to say I'm excited about it, but I'm excited about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it excites me, and it's very mm-hmm. healing. It's very I'll healing bet. to me to, um, to be able to give people something practical and have them say, have an aha moment. That's what I can do, and I Absolutely. and I just am very glad to be able to use the pain that I experienced and my family experienced, and the same for Lisa. She experienced pain with losing her parents, and so we're happy to be able to give back. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's got to be very healing. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you both so much. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.